Welcome to Experts in Global Sports, Voices of Change, a podcast by the International Coaching Course, the ITK, based at the Sports Science Faculty of Leipzig University in Germany. In this podcast, you are going to listen to Voices of Change about experiences, knowledge and stories of the ITK community. We want to spread inspiration, passion and motivation in global sports. In this episode, you will listen to Sara Moman Abdesamia from Egypt. She graduated in a master degree of global sport management and is currently head of marketing for sports clubs in Egypt. She is also part of the IOC Young Leaders Program 2023 to 2026. This program of the IOC, the International Olympic Committee, empowers talents to leverage the power of sport to make a positive difference in their communities. With the support of the IOC and a network of mentors, these young people are agents of Olympism and they promote the Olympic values, spreading the message of sports for good. We talked about Sarah's work with refugees, inspired by her time in Ithaca, Leipzig. She also tells us about her experience in Leipzig and how it led her to start a similar project with refugees in her own country, Egypt. We chat about using sports to help them deal with their challenges, follow their dreams and work on their mental health. Sarah shares the touching story about Yusra Mardini, a Syrian refugee who was a competitive swimmer and how her journey inspires others. We explore how sports can be a way to promote peace around the world, bringing social change and challenging injustice. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about your journey from professional volleyball player to your yeah. master degree in global sports management and now your role in marketing and media operations. Yes, yes, yeah, definitely yes. So, um, as you know, yeah, I'm Sara Moment. <laughs> I'm an IOC Young Leader and I'm a marketing manager right now. And sometimes I'm working as a media coordinator for the international and local uh, tournaments, championships. Uh, I can start by saying my journey from being a young athlete to a sport management professional may have seemed sudden, <laughs> but it was a result of my continuous uh, pursuit of excellence and my passion for sports. So as a young child, my parents instilled in me and my brother the value of engaging in physical activities, not just um, to maintain our physical well-being, but also to develop a positive attitude. So my interest uh, in sports led me to pursue volleyball as a serious sport. And this is the sport that I love the most, actually. <laughs> uh, so through hard work, the dictation and constant practice, I eventually reached a level of excellence that allowed me to compete professionally. Uh, however, I knew that was more to my journey than just playing sports. Uh, I decided to enroll in media college, and that was one of my dreams too. <laughs> uh, so to, to allow me to explore the possibilities of combining my passion for sports with the, my interest in media. It was during this time that I discovered a sports management, um, the sports man management field, um, a vast and complex field that uh, encompasses many domains, including marketing, event management, po policy making, and etc. Uh, from then on, I knew that sports management was the right path for me and I committed myself to developing the skills and knowledge necessary to succeed in this field. I was fortunate uh, to have had the opportunity to work with various professionals in the industry, which exposed me to the inner workings um, of the sports management and allowed me to gain invaluable experience. Uh, I can say at the end today, as a professional in sports management, I'm grateful for the journey that I lead me to being here. Uh, I'm proud to be part of the field that promotes sportsmanships, uh, fosters healthy competitions, and offers numerous opportunities uh, for growth and development. Yeah, so that's it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and now you're uh, working at a volleyball club as a marketing manager. Um, how can I? Imagine that, like a day in your at your work. 
Yes, actually, yeah, it's not a sports, a volleyball club. It's a sports club. It's a chain of clubs, actually. It's called the Porto okay. Sporting Clubs. Uh, we have many locations uh, all over Egypt. We have in many uh, cities around us. Um, I got the opportunity. I was lucky enough to get the opportunity to be the, the marketing manager for this club uh, since we started like three years ago. So it's kind of you are working from scratch, literally from scratch. <laughs> I do enjoying actually my work uh, because as you know that I'm, I'm really into uh, the marketing field and the communication and media and so on. So I can say that uh, my primary responsibilities, including management, the promotion and communication of sports events, coordinating media coverage and managing social media platforms for sports, uh, the sports club. Uh, I can also oversee the development and the implementation of the media strategy, strategies to improve the visibility and marketability of sports events in my club. So yeah, I do enjoy my job. <laughs> okay, <laughs> amazing. And uh, you're also an IOC young leader. Maybe you can tell me a little bit about uh, how you how you got to this role at the beginning, and yeah, yeah. how what are you doing there? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, so actually, yeah. Let me start uh, by saying. When I was young, it was one of my dreams to be an Olympian. Okay, I do love volleyball as a sport, and I was always dreaming to join one of the Olympics. But due to unforeseen circumstances, that dream was not realized. Uh, despite this, I did not lose hope. I worked tirelessly to reach the IOC because I wanted to be really engaged somehow with the Olympics. Um, so I was determined. I was determined to make a meaningful, positive impact in this world through sport. And I was thinking, why not to 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 look at the top uh, organizations in sports and trying my best to be part of it. Uh, so it was one of these. A journey that I in, unexpectedly found my path towards helping refugees, and I was like really, um, I was really amazed by how sports can help other people. Because at the beginning, I was only thinking, ah, oh, we can just practice sports to um, for the physical uh, appearance, to be fit, uh, and for the well-being and so on. But I couldn't imagine that sports actually can work. It can help and assist others in their lives. So by chance, uh, I got to know the program of IOC Young Leaders uh, from one of my friends. And uh, I, I do like the idea of the project, the program itself. It's it's kind of supporting the young um, the young people to uh, to create a positive change in their communities through sport. And I do love sport. I do love sports management. I do love sports for development. So I was thinking, why not apply in such an opportunity and try to get the best out of it? So uh, I remember, uh, I'm always saying this sentence, but I remember uh, I got to know the program th three years ago, and I got to know that they will open again in 2023. And I kept preparing my file <laughs> okay. uh, till this moment. It's like, three years of hard working to reach this point because I want to really take it. I just want to be part of the IOC Young Leaders. So I kept preparing for it. And once the application opened, I applied for it. And I remember they said this application, it will only take two hours. Uh, and I, I kept like writing a lot of stuff during the whole day. And it took me one whole day to finish my application. Wow. And after that, yeah. I got accepted. It was such a dream and my dream came true. <laughs> so it was it was worth it. Yes, definitely yes. <laughs> and but within this program you're involved in a program with uh, working with refugees, right? True. Yeah, that's Maybe true. You can explain a bit more about this project? Yeah. Yeah, tr it, yeah definitely yes. So uh, actually I had the opportunity to interact with refugees who had faced uh, unimaginable hardships, wars, the displacement, and unimaginable loss. Uh, their stories really broke my heart and I found myself wanting to do something to help them. Uh, this feeling was amplified when I saw the bodies of the young kids who had droned in the sea near the, to the Turkish coast um, like a couple of years ago. 
uh, I was always thinking and imagine um, how um, how they passed through that, how was the situation, how they did they felt during that time and I kept like really um feeling horrible uh for a couple of days I kept I couldn't actually like sleep well on those days and um I felt like oh my god I have to do something to assist people I have to do something to assist refugees years later I found myself in Germany studying in ETK <laughs> the sports management mm -hmm. diploma um, and that was when I stumbled upon a group of refugees who were using sports as a means of promoting mental health and well-being. I saw firsthand how sports could benefit people who had suffered so much, and I knew that I wanted to get involved. It was then that I realized uh, that I have found my calling to help refugees use sports to overcome their struggles and realize their dreams. Um, the route has not been easy and the obstacles faced by refugees are immense, <laughs> uh, but I'm committed to using my skills and passion for sports to make a positive difference in their lives. And actually together we can create a world where all dreamers can succeed no matter their circumstances. So this is what I'm only thinking about. Um, I'm really a CSR oriented person and I would love to really help and assisting people around me. But when it coming to a global issue like refugees issue nowadays and the displacement, so I would love, like really to do something different. I would like really to assist the refugees and make them overcome all what they passed through uh, during the last couple of years. Yep. Mm, amazing. How can I imagine this uh, project or your work there? You're you're working there with with the refugees, or you're organizing it, or how how does it work? Yeah, you mean about my project? Yeah. Yes. So that basically, uh, yeah. Um, so basically, uh, I'm I'm trying to mix between the sport and the mental health. Uh, as you know, that it's a, a global trend right now, and uh, the IOC, they are encouraging everyone to working on the mental health and well-being staff, as it's uh, one of the SDGs. So yeah. uh, basically, um, in my country, I recognize that there is not a lot of uh, project that they are targeting refugees, and we are actually hub, the African hub for refugees, and also we have like a lot of refugees from Syria and other countries. So I was thinking, why not to do something different in my country that I I saw it in the other countries in Europe, Europe and so on, such as the project in Germany. So I was thinking, why not to just try to bring uh, the refugee kids in my project and prepare them. Uh, through sport and uh, psychological sessions, um, uh, prepare them for life and uh, make them feel that they are included and make them uh, dream, make them uh, believe that they can do something different. They are not refugees, actually, actually they are dreamers. Um, and basically it will, con it, the, the, the project itself will contain of the sport as part of it and try to implement what they are doing in the sport in psychological sessions or try to implement what they are taking in the psychological session in the court itself while they are playing the sport. So somehow we're going to implement this in real life to overcome what they are passed through. So basically like this is what I'm trying to do and hopefully it will work well. <laughs> Okay, so you're also doing the psychological sessions or you do that with someone else? Yeah, I'm not doing myself, but okay. I have a partnership and this is actually, I don't have a partnership. I'm working on a partnership with okay. psychological, uh, yeah, uh, psychological, uh, I can say, uh, company, <laughs> agency, uh, that they can uh, join me as a partner and they can come and support the project and giving the sessions for the kids my target group for the project. Okay, and yeah. uh, maybe you can share a specific story um, where like sport played a role in helping refugees to, to overcome challenges or to in integrate in yeah. communities. Yeah, that's really a good, a really, really, really good question because I do have a story that I'm in love with. <laughs> and this story, not everyone was aware about it until uh, they create a movie in Netflix about it, The Swimmers. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm really in love with the story of Yusra Mardini uh, because uh, it's both incredibly inspiring and profoundly moving. 
Um, so Yusra Mardini is a Syrian swimmer. Uh, she determined to make her mark on the world stage, even in the face of seemingly, uh, seemingly obstacles. Um, so the story is Yusra Mardini and her sister, they risked everything when they escaped from Syria because of the war in a lifeboat headed to Germany. Uh, however, things did not go according to the plan and the boat started to sink. In a moment of a pure courage, actually, um, uh, Yusra and her sister decided to jump in the water and help the rest of the passengers to reach safely. Uh, so they kept like uh, swimming for kilometers, determined to survive and make it to Germany. And actually, they saved everyone in the lifeboat. So once they reached reach it to Germany, uh, Yusra was determined to continue swimming because actually she was a swimmer in her country, and her father was the coach of it, of her. Um, and uh, she just determined to continue swimming to pursue her dream of becoming an Olympian. Uh, she went to many sports clubs, uh, swimming clubs, and she was approaching a swimming coach and asking to begin training with him. And she kept like telling him about her story and she swam uh, in the sea to rescue the passenger, the Syrian passengers on the lifeboat for kilometers. And the coach was not really like believing that. He was wondering how you really did that. Um, but she kept like um, telling her coach that she have a potential of being an Olympian. She have a passion of the sport and she want to be an Olympian one day. Uh, she worked like really uh, tirelessly, committing herself to every practice, every stroke, and every moment of uh, preparation. Um, actually, uh, Yusra, she made the, the history by joining the uh, Rio 2016 um, as a part of the refugee team, Olympic refugee team. And she, yeah, she, that was like really inspiring for me. When I was watching the movie, I got really touched and I was thinking, Everyone, like, should try to be like Yusra Mardini. She yeah. like break all the barriers, and she made made it to the Olympic. Um, and nowadays, like, no one, um, everyone actually knowing Yusra Mardini. She's like really a great, um, like, she really teaches us uh, that we all have the power to overcome obstacles and achieve our dreams, no matter how difficult the journey happened to be. So, yeah, that was like one of my favorite inspiring stories that everyone, like, I I'm, I'm trying my best actually to share it with everyone because I yeah. do love it. And I never it heard about it. It's inspired it's very... me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> really? Wow. Yeah. But, but yeah, I, I do love this story and um, I found it like, like really, really, really inspiring. And yeah. in my plan, I would like really um, like uh, telling my, my, my target group, my kids <laughs> in the in the project about it because it's like mm -hmm. really inspiring. Yeah. 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 Another point of the like also one of the SDGs is uh, peace or yeah, peace, bring peace through sports. Exactly. Um, do you like how do you how do you do that or how do you do you aim on on the peace in sports yeah or through sports? yeah it's, so yeah so as you said that peace is like a really uh, main part of the sdgs it's one of the goals and to achieve peace through sport it's not that easy but it's possible i'm always like uh, i'm always like really thinking from a positive side that we can use the power, soft power of a sport to promote for peace worldwide. And this is how we can achieve that by actually, I have like many points in mind. So I can say by promoting sportsmanship um, so that coaches, teams and organizations can put a strong emphasis on sportsmanship, uh, fair play and respect for opponents. Athletes should be taught, taught to treat each other with respect and um, respect uh, both on and off the field. I can say also encouraging diversity and inclusivity. Sports organizations should strive to create an environment that welcomes and embraces diversity that includes promoting opportunities for athletes from different backgrounds and cultures to participate in sports as well as providing resources and support for athletes. Another point is very important, using sports as a platform for soci social change. So sports can be used as a powerful uh, platform for promoting social change, uh, change and challenging injustice. 
while speaking out against discrimination and using sport to promote messages of peace, justice, and inclusiveness. Uh, inclusiveness <laughs> athletes and sports organization can make a positive impact on their communities so we should like really uh use the power of a sport to promote for peace worldwide and yeah that's it <laughs> this is all the thoughts that came to my mind so i don't know what to <laughs> say more but yeah no yeah i think it's just uh it's not like a direct effect but like an indirect effect of sports to bring couldn't to agree bring more peace. yeah also like peace doesn't or only mean between countries but also within a community or like it helps to communicate maybe between between groups that normally wouldn't communicate so that could also yeah. be couldn't like, agree more a kind of couldn't. peace yeah couldn't yeah. agree more yeah um, coming to a different topic that's also an SDG, the gender equality, but I want to focus a bit more on you as a person, as a, yeah. as a woman in a leadership position. Um, maybe you can, um, yeah, tell us a bit if you had any, yeah, challenges to overcome or how was your, your way to a woman in leadership position in sports? Yeah, I can say, um, I would say, <laughs> actually, yeah, I do appreciate the importance uh, of diversity and inclusion in leadership roles, both um, in, in actually in all industries, not only in the sports field. So actually, there are some studies have shown that having women in leadership positions can have a significant impact on the gender equality and on the success of businesses or organizations. Um, so, yeah, I, I got the opportunity to be like, uh, a woman in the sports field to be a leader in the, the in this field, and I'm, I'm I'm all the time trying to use these um, to inspire others. So I have the opportunity to encourage women to pursue leadership roles. I believe that women need to be proactive about seeking leadership opportunities and to actively invest in their personal and professional development. Uh, so this is actually uh, can include seeking out mentorship and networking opportunities, attending leadership training programs and developing a strong personal brand. Moreover, and this is the most important point that I, I'm always believing in, that we are lifting up each other. So we are supporting each other. When a woman being in a leadership position, she should um, to support other women and push them to be uh, part of the leadership positions too. So yeah, we are lifting each other. We, li we are lifting up each other. <laughs> you, as, as a woman leadership position, I wonder if you have a role model or as a kid, or if you have a role model now that helped you to yeah, reach your goals or to be where you are now. Yeah, this is a really good question, but actually it made me like think in another way, who is my really, really model, role model who made me like reach to this position. So I, I would say definitely, definitely, definitely it, it was my mom. And <laughs> because actually my mom, she's like a really strong woman. She kept like teaching me how to be strong, how to be independent, how to do whatever I want. She gave me the chance to choose whatever I want. And she was always like trying to instilled some values when I was young in me and my actually my siblings um, and like good values uh, to choose whatever I want when I, I'm getting old and she was the one that kept like pushing me to continue my studies to traveling abroad to get to know more people to get the experience and being totally independent um, and she's the one still like all the time motivating me and telling me um, that you have a message in this world and you have to promote for your message. You love to help others, you love peace, you love a sport. Try to use all of that to make this world a better place for everyone. So I would say, yeah, my room mother is my mom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's that's for a lot of girls that they have a role model that there's not that the role model is their mom. <laughs> yes, um, yeah. But I'm sure that you also already are or will be a role model for a lot of young girls as well. Or maybe you have some advice for, for young girls or young people in general to to give that want to achieve like positions in, in sports. 
Yes, yes, definitely yes. Um, I would say as someone with experience in both uh, both sports and management, um, my advice for young individuals who aspire to have a meaningful career in the sports industry, uh, while also making a difference in promoting peace, where would be uh, to I have some points actually in mind. So first of all, they have to pursue, um, pursue education and training. It's very important to acquire knowledge and skills that are relevant to the sports industry. Uh, this may involve enrolling in sports management uh, courses, internships, or mentorships uh, programs. Uh, second point is to develop a strong network. A good network is essential in our industry. Uh, building relationships with professionals in the industry can help create opportunities and provide guidance. Uh, joining sports uh, clubs and attending um, industry uh, events can support these also. Uh, one more point is seek out volunteering opportunities, and this is actually what I did <laughs> before. Uh, so volunteering can provide a valuable experience and exposure to the industry. It also helps to promote a sense of social responsibility, I can say, and can give young individuals the opportunity, the opportunity to contribute to the positive, uh, positive causes. Uh, one more point is stay focused and persist. Okay, so breaking into the sports industry can be challenging, but it's important actually to stay focused um, on the end goal. Um, and uh, yeah, and the last point I can say, um, one more point, <laughs> keep an eye out uh, for peace building opportunities. Uh, look for opportunities in the sports industry that focus on pe peace building um, or social responsibility. Keep in mind that sports can be used as a platform for promoting peace and positive change. Uh, so I can summarize all that by saying young individuals <laughs> aspiring uh, to make a difference in promoting peace in the sports industry should focus on education, networking, volunteering, stay persistent, please, please don't forget this, <laughs> and look out for opportunities that are aligned with their values. By doing this, they can build meaningful and impactful careers in the sports industry while also making a positive difference in this world. Thank you for listening to this episode of Experts in Global Sports, Voices of Change a podcast of the International Coaching Course. Do you feel inspired by what has been said? Did you learn something new? Do you want to share your story? Get in touch with us on Instagram or Facebook to follow our common goal to develop and promote sports to make the world a better place.